Okay, so today we're taking a look at the money flow index. So that is going to be very similar to our relative strength index in terms of how we build the function with loading in the data, defining the strategy, and testing the strategy. Same as always. So we're going to make a new file, call it mfi.ipymb, same libraries as always, paste those in. And just to initialize the kernel, I'm going to run that. And our global variables are going to be very similar. The money flow index works pretty similarly. And we paste in our code to get the data. Same function as always. And we're going to start to look back out at 100. Make this so our plots look normal. And now we're going to define our indicator that we use. We use to create the money flow index. So let's define money add MFI. The data frame. Great. So with that, let's get started. Um, the first thing we're going to be adding is the average price. And we're going to be making a separate column for that by dividing data frame high, data frame low, and data frame close. So high plus data frame low plus data frame close divided by three. You want this one. And then that is going to equal our column called data frame average price. <laughs> and then from there, we need to add the money flow, which is simply the average price multiplied by the volume. And we already have the volume column loaded in from Yahoo Finance. So data frame money flow equals data frame volume times data frame average price. Great. So return the data frame. And now let's add these functions to the main function to see what we have so far. Def df equals get data. df equals add mfi to the data frame, return the data frame from main. And then if we do df, we should get a nice output. Nice. So that's the average price and then the respective money flow, which is the average price multiplied by the volume. So now we're going to make an empty column for the positive and negative money flow. So data frame pause flow is going to equal zero. And the data frame neg flow is also going to equal zero. And we're going to change these values using NumPy going forward. And now we're going to be going back to numpy.where to verify or to define our positive and negative flow values based on the previous price. So the price beforehand is going to be what dictates the value of these columns. So we're using np.where, the data frame average price, and then we're going back to that diff function that we used in the last video. Diff, if it is greater than zero, then <clears throat> it is just going to be the data frame average price. Great. Otherwise, we're going to leave it at zero. The same thing is going to go for a negative flow. So we paste that in, and if it is less than zero, Then it gets a one, or it gets the original value, negative flow. 
and then otherwise we leave it as zero. So when we run this function, we just take the data frame. Awesome. So you can see that when we have positive flow, we do not have negative flow. And when we have negative flow, we do not have positive flow because we changed our positive and negative flow columns based on the values of the previous day. So if the difference is greater than zero, then there is positive flow. And if the difference is less than zero, there's a negative flow. Simple. So let's move forward to start calculating the actual indi indicator. So the money flow ratio is going to be a rolling window of the proportions each of these are to each other. So let's start coding that out. Money flow ratio is equal to data frame positive flow dot rolling and then period. Uh, we're gonna do this MFI length change this to MFI and inside of our MFI function we're going to call length equals MFI length so we can just do this as yeah. perfect so it's always going to be that 14 day rolling window and then we want the rolling sum. So usually we do rolling mean, but we can also take a rolling sum to get the money flow ratio divided by the data, data frame negative flow. Same thing dot rolling length dot sum. So and then we have the sum of the positive and negative flows over the last 14 days to get indication of how strong the positive and negative flows are. And finally, we're just going to make the money flow index column. So the data frame money flow index equals the same standardization function as our relative strength index. So it's 100. divided by one plus the money flow ratio. So it's always going to be between zero and 100. Write a little note, add money column. So what we should see is a lot of columns and at the very end, a money flow column in our table. Great. And so the first 14 values are not a number. So let's return data frame dot drop in a, just like we did in our last episode. And we should see a perfect data frame with a bunch of values. And if we plot the data frame money flow index plp dot plot data frame MFI. Yep, it's exactly what you want to see. A bunch of values between zero and 100. We're overbought at 30 and oversold at overbought at 70 and oversold at 30. So let's do plt.ax. Great. So now we have our money flow index all perfectly set up. So let's define the strategy. And you guessed it, we can paste in the strategy from our last episode in the relative, relative strength code. So we go to relative strength, we add our strategy and it's exactly the same. When prices are overbought, we go long, and when pri <laughs> when prices are overbought, we go short, and when prices are oversold, we go long. We just have to change the name of the column we're referencing from RSI to MFI, and we have to shift it back a day so we only take the signals when um, the day after they actually occur. So let's run all of this to see our final strategy column, add strategy, nope. strategy to the data frame. All. Okay, so we're only long in the rare instances where prices are below the threshold and we've just shifted it back. So it wouldn't be a one here, even though it looks like it, it would be a one the day after because we only understood that 
they crossed below over sold when we hit the close price. So now the ones start the day afterwards. Awesome. And now that we have our strategy column, we can do the same thing we always do again. We go to the RSI, we paste in our plot and test strategy code. And because we've named it the same, strategy, close strategy, great. We just have to change the name of this to MFI. And then add DF equals test strategy, the data frame. And all should be good. We should see a plot of our returns. Great. So at first glance, once again, for the first 100 days, the money flow index looks like it helps. Partially because we were taking very few trades and the stock market went down in the last 100 trading days. So we can bump this up to take a look at more time. So let's do a thousand days. Well, that doesn't work and that looks way worse than our relative strength index too so if we go to relative strength and show you the 1000 day plot as well on the s p 500 you can see it doesn't it looks a lot better than our current money flow index um i also want to do the same thing we did here so let's take this plot control x and add that to our V. Great. And PLT dot title money flow index values. So when we run the whole thing, we get both plots. Awesome. And um, I'm sure you can probably imagine by now. If we zoom out even further, we're going to see something even worse. So let's go to 10,000 days. And it's just no good. You lose most of your money following the money flow index on a standalone basis for the course of 30 years um, <clears throat> and this is just another example of showing you guys in plain detail <clears throat> in the clear detail exactly how um, these indicators work on a standalone basis if you didn't have the authority to test the default strategy that you now can using code this would look a lot more appealing than it does when you see the returns this way we now have the ability to tailor all of these um, look back windows as you see fit. You can change the look back window, let's say we wanted to do 20, and instead of overbought and oversold, we can do something I like to just test out. Let's do 51 and 49. So every time the prices are even slightly uh, in a different direction, we can take a look at it. That doesn't work either. And there's our overbought and oversold lines right in the middle. Let's take a look at a thousand days of that. So you're always in a position, but it, it just doesn't work. And the longer you stick with it, the the less it, um, it works out for you. And it the whole process might feel like, oh, I'm, I'm winning. Look, I, I got it or I got it. There's a bunch of instances where these strategies do go up. Um, but the truth is they never beat on a standalone basis just buying and holding the S&P 500 ever. You need to do something extremely creative. And what these, what these episodes give you is the groundwork for building something that is at least competitive. Good luck building an advanced trading strategy around what we have so far. And until next time, stay sharp.